Why is having limited resources a bad excuse for not making a film? I think anything you want to do in film, you're get, you, there's no such thing as unlimited resources, really, right? So you have to decide what are the confines of what I'm doing. And if you, if you have $100 million, there are confines. If you have you know, $1, there are confines. And uh, having that, those limitations and those constraints is an opportunity, in my, in my view. It's not, it's not a, a, a pain or a punishment or anything like that. It's an opportunity to say, what can I do creatively or what can I do in a smart way that works within those constraints? And that's why you know, when, we're, um, when we're thinking about what film we're going to make, I might have a script that's a $100 million script, not going to make that film, not going to try to make that film. But I know that if I, you know, if I have these resources, I'm going to write something that works within the confines of those resources. It helps me to be creative because it says, it, instead of having the whole world to write about, instead of saying there are unlimited ideas, I know I only have this much stuff to work with. And we, we write a lot for location. So, you know, for example, um, Sophia, my, my creative and, and life partner's parents, had a barn with sheep in it. And so we're like, you know, it would be really interesting if we, if we uh, use this as part of telling this, this type of story that we want to tell. And that gives us some, you know, production value for no, no cost. And, and, uh, but, you know, we wouldn't have necessarily done that. If I, if I had the, the world to work with, I wouldn't have said, oh, you know, this sheep barn is a really interesting, you know, thing to write into this story. So you start to actually... Uh, use the pieces and the resources that you have, and it helps you. It actually helps you creatively to to um, to do something that I think you know is more connected and meaningful. And you value the things that you have more than if you have you know kind of unlimited options. And then going back to what we talked about a little bit earlier, in that a lot of people say, "Well, I don't want to do this unless this is the budget." Um, why do you think some people don't want to utilize what they have? Again, is that fear? Yeah, I think it's fear. I mean, I think the only excuse is really fear. And um, we also take the approach, we're, we're very DIY in general. So we, coming from music, we basically were like, well, we got to, you know, we taught ourselves to play our instruments, right? So that's just starting point for it. We're like, we'll learn how to play songs on our own. We'll learn how to write songs on our own. Then we'll learn how to record on our own. You know, maybe we went to a studio first, but then we realized that's expensive. So let's, let's learn how to do that. So when we enter film, we sort of think like, well, we better learn, you know, how to how to shoot. We better learn how to edit. We better learn how to do sound. And uh, I think a lot of people are afraid to sit down and dedicate the time to learning those things. So if you're not willing to do that, it can be harder if you don't, you know, if you don't have money. Again, any problem can be solved with money, uh, or you have to find some kind of other, you know, creative solution. So if you don't have money, you, you need to actually sit down, dedicate the time, the energy to basically learning everything you need to learn. You need to make the social networks and the kind of uh, creative networks to get people to come together and to, to uh, work with you to create something. And um, it's intimidating. It's an intimidating task. If you're not used to it, that's, that's to sit down and say, like, I'm going to learn to be a filmmaker. Um, it's gotten easier in, the, in recent years because now people have phones and they can, it's really easy. I mean, it may not be, you know, a, a blockbuster masterpiece, but you can make a movie on your phone. It's it's a re, you know reasonable looking movie better than you know what digital looked like ten years ago when on the best cameras, fifteen years ago maybe, um, but uh, I think people have just a, a fear of that or a, a feeling of in, being intimidated by the the process because it's such a big process. In film, is there no right way to do anything? Like, is there are there certain things that you must do? You know, whether it's Dogma ninety five and these certain uh, rules that. Have to happen. I don't. I don't think there's really a right way to do anything in the broad sense. I think there's a right way to accomplish. If you set a specific goal or you set a specific target, there's probably a right way to accomplish that target. So, uh, if my goal is to have my film play at a certain festival or to to reach a certain audience, there are ways that are going to work for accomplishing that goal, and there are ways that are not going to work. Um, and so. You have to think about what you're, what what is it that you're intending to do when you make a film? When you set out to make a film, what is the purpose of that film? Who is the film for? What do you want to happen with the film once it's done? Um, and then I think you need to make decisions about what is you know the quote unquote right right set of things to do in order to achieve those goals. Did the two of you encounter that when you were first starting out with film, for sort of transitioning from music? Did were people like, oh, well, then you have to do A, B, and C, or else it's not worth it? 
Yeah, when we were first doing uh, our first, we were making our first feature film and we were trying to hire uh, a crew, or hire camera people and so on. Um, some of them are like, well, you have to shoot it this way, or you have to do this, or you have to approach that. And we're thinking like, well, we can't afford, it's not gonna happen, we can't afford to do that. And so, you know, we kind of just pushed those people aside and kept kind of looking for the people who are willing to find the solution uh, to make it the way that you know, w was viable. And I think you know, what, what ended up happening in a lot of cases is those people who um, kind of had those strict rules about how, how it must be done haven't really made movies. Uh, they're you know, 10 years down the line, haven't really made a movie, haven't really accomplished much of anything. Some of them have uh, you know, responded maybe with some jealousy toward us or some, some negativity toward us about you know, the, the success of some of this. And um, I understand their point of view now, like a little bit, because you know, at, at this stage, I wouldn't necessarily work on a movie. Like if you, if you said to me, do you wanna come work on this movie? We're gonna shoot it on my phone and we're gonna you know, record it with audio on the phone and do, do all this stuff. I might say no to that because it's not really, but I wouldn't say that the person is wrong. I just say that's not the right project for, for me to be involved with. And understanding that, uh, I can understand the different perspectives, but I do think most people, when they're trying to set up rules, those rules harm them more than they help them. But it also feels like if the whole thing goes badly, it's my fault, sort of. I don't think there's anyone else to blame. The blame is always going to fall on my shoulders. That's a quote we found. Okay. Talk about blame and creativity. Being, being uh, you know, in charge of in charge of a project. I mean, ultimately, right? The buck the buck stops at the uh, at the director, or the producer, or the team that's kind of at the top. Um, yeah, but I think you know you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid of disaster, because disasters. I mean, I guess it could happen instantaneously, but typically the process of making a film, things are always going wrong. And it's a matter of how you tackle those problems as they arise. So even what feels like a disaster in one moment, you can find a solution, you can make adjustments, you can keep moving forward. And uh, you know, if you're cut out to be a filmmaker, you'll find a way to get to an end point where everybody, it may not be the film that you know, you're thrilled about or that you're most happy about, but where everybody feels like, okay, we did our best with what we had, we got to where we, we could with it. Um, and I think people understand that even when it's not perfect, they know if they, if they see that process and they see that dedication, they know that the people who are kind of in charge of the thing put their best effort forward. And uh, I don't think you can feel guilty about putting your best effort forward, even if it's not ultimately what you had hoped for. You've mentioned that both you and Sophia have committed to learning every job on set. Play the devil's advocate for a moment. Would that make it more, you know, sort of the, the jack of all trades, master of none? How do you, how do you reconcile that? Yeah, I think to some degree that, that's gonna be true, but um, the way I view it is I need to get good enough on set at every job that I, my goal is to hire somebody better than me ultimately to replace me, right? I don't wanna do all those jobs. I, I wanna replace some, uh, find somebody uh, who's better than me to replace me for that. But in a pinch, if I need to do something, I'm gonna be able to solve those problems. And luckily for us, I mean, the, the thing is we come, from, because we come from music, we did audio for so many years in, in different regards. We did uh, sound recording, we did you know, music production, we did mixing and all that. So it was very easy to jump into production, sound recording and sound mixing, uh, but post mixing and everything. Um, and then we mostly dedicated our interest to understanding cameras, the technical and creative parts of, how, of cinematography and camera work. Um, and anything else on set, we just need to be able to, to fill in gaps is kind of how I, how I see it. Uh, so I don't think you need to be a master. I, on an independent film, is anybody probably a, a you know, full professional master at any of the jobs they're doing? Maybe, you know, I mean, it, it depends on how you define that. There are people who are very good. I mean, we work with excellent people. I'm not, I'm not saying that we don't. Um, but, you know, you're, you're balancing all the different things. And, and ultimately, the way I view it is, when I set out to make the film, my job is to make sure the film gets made. And so if I have to do an imperfect job of something along the way there, that's what has to be done in order for the film to get made. 
And to your point about hiring people, if you don't know what you were sort of in undertaking, it would be difficult to know what's this person's skill level. If absolutely. You haven't done it. Yeah, yeah. So for hiring, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it also helps to, because sometimes it's a challenge because I need to hire somebody like for post production, for example. If I'm going to have an editor on the film or I'm going to have a, a, um, a re recording mixer on the film, they have to be better than I am. And I'm not saying I'm great. But I'm better than most people who are going to be in the in the sort of budget range that we're working with, or the in independent film. So it's rare that that you know we're going to be able to go out. Now, on our most recent film, we were we do have an editor, for example. Um, but yeah, I can then evaluate how good somebody is at a job. I can um, fill in if I need to, and uh, it's just helpful because on set, if I'm directing or producing. I know what their job is like. I know what this, the, the sound mixer is doing. And I know if I hear something, I'm, I know, oh, there's going to be a problem for the sound mixer. And I can talk to the sound mixer and say, oh, I know there's, this is going on. I can, be, I can be conscientious about the challenges that each of the crew members are facing at that moment and try to work with them better, be, be a better kind of leader and manager. Because if, you, if you're trying to be a leader and you have no idea what, what anybody below you is doing, uh, you're not going to be a very good leader.